Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to live in China, but you cannot become a Chinese. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to live in America and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a talk show program featuring the lives of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion. Created by Think Tank Hawaii and Kingsfield Law Office, we invite renowned immigrants and descendants of immigrants to discuss their life stories, family history, immigration adventures, and their contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is our very good friend, Professor Yan Zhou, art historian and curator. Welcome, Professor Zhou. Hi. Nice to meet you, Wan Tang. Well, so happy you can be our guest. You are the third, second art historian we interviewed, but you are oh. my favorite art historian in uh, addition to my graduate mentor, uh, Professor Feinberg. Uh, I do, I'm particularly interested in uh, this discussion with you because I'm reading your book. A history yeah, wow. of contemporary Chinese art. Mm -hmm. It's of more than five hundred pages. Just yes. stunning research and scholarship. I really, you know, impressed by your wonderful work. I have read many articles that you authored, but this is my first time to have a whole picture of your research and contribution. Thank you. And and you mentioned that you have worked on this book like fifteen years. And uh, start from uh, like uh, uh, twenty fourteen and the publishing like twenty twenty. It's about like six years. Six years. Oh my! Well, let uh, uh, let's share with our audience your short bio. Professor okay. Doctor Yan Zhou is a leading Chinese art historian and visual resources curator at Kenyan College. He teaches courses on Asian art history with a particular emphasis on modern and contemporary Chinese art. His research focuses on Chinese contemporary art in the context of globalization and post-colonialism. He has published widely in Chinese scholarly journals and in English in such journals as Issue Journal of Contemporary Chinese Art. His most recent book, A History of Contemporary Chinese Art, is a comprehensive and insightful history of Chinese art in the most turbulent period of its 5,000 years long history. Let's start with your book, Professor Zhou. Okay. The title of this book is A History of Contemporary Chinese Art. And I just had a conversation with one of my artist friends, with mm -hmm. a, a very prominent uh, Chinese artist. And he said, this is a good title because it's ch contemporary Chinese art, not Chinese contemporary art. The reason he thought that was is, is a good title is he, in his argument, he said, yes, they are Chinese art, and uh, but the ch contemporary Chinese art technically is not part of contemporary art. And I'm very curious to hear your comments. And why you whether or not you intentionally choose uh, your book title? Okay, I think that's a pretty good question. Uh, contemporary Chinese art and uh, Chinese contemporary art uh, are two different uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I use the history of uh, contemporary Chinese art is because chronologically, uh, contemporary time period for China. Uh, to my understanding, start from 1949. So uh, the uh, history of uh, contemporary Chinese art uh, coordinately start from 1949 and uh, then to the present. Mm -hmm. uh, 70 years of a history of a Chinese art. That's uh, basically the, uh, the content of this book. But Chinese contemporary art it's different idea and the concept because contemporary art is very kind of a academic, a scholarly kind of concept. It got the definition 
and may not every art historian agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, contemporary art started from uh, the uh, after the World War II uh, in the world. And uh, but of course, there are still different ideas and opinions on that. Uh, to my understanding, the Chinese contemporary art started from late 1970s, uh, which is right after the Cultural Revolution, and then start a kind of a new period of a Chinese art. Uh, well, people may say in 1980s there was uh, like a Chinese avant-garde movement. Uh, to me, that was a start of the contemporary Chinese art. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the Chinese contemporary art, and because they are really an uh, important part of the Enlightenment in 1980s, and yes. also they got very very strong kind of a sense of uh, attack the traditional Chinese art, including the official art in China. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to know that the contemporary art in China started in 19. 1980s, continue 1990s, and continue the 21st century. Uh, people say, well, they may or may not be the part of a contemporary art. I do not agree with that because in the global context, very much start from 1990s, the Chinese artists uh, deal with the issues domestically and globally. And when they deal with the, the issues, like global issues, like environment and other kind of uh, geopolitics issues, they are contemporary art. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my understanding, yes. Very good explanation. Thank you very much. We will get back to the contemporary art and the Chinese art later in the show. But okay. let's start with your uh, uh, your uh, family life and your immigration adventure. And obviously, both you and I are Chinese American right. Americans. And uh, could you please tell us a little bit about your childhood and your schooling in China? Where were you born? Mm -hmm. And which school you go to? Uh, and and how did you come to the United States? Right. So I think as uh, briefly, I was born in Changsha, uh, Hunan. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, educational background start with my idea to study in the Changsha, of course, elementary school and middle school in my hometown mm -hmm. and high school as well. After high school, I went to, uh, uh, interestingly, in the, during the Cultural Revolution, I went to uh, a school of the, uh, the art and the craft. In Chinese, mm -hmm. we call the Gong Yi Mei Su Xie Xiao, School mm -hmm. of Art and Craft. That's a two year uh, study over there. So I started fine arts uh, in a sense. After that, I was assigned a job, you know, still a school assigned job for you during the Cultural Revolution, even after the Cultural Revolution, and uh, work in the uh, porcelain. Uh, factory in Hulan province mm -hmm. in the, another two years over there. Then uh, 1977, when, the, when China and the Re uh, start the, the, their higher education and take exam for the students who want to go to the college, so I was the first class of a, a Re taking the exam to get to college. They, they called it the 77 class. Oh, yeah. That's and, very, very prestigious. Yeah. <laughs> and very, very competitive. And yes. uh, then I went to the uh, Zhongshan University in Guangzhou and uh, 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 the Department of uh, Philosophy. Mm. Uh, even though that's not my first choice, but... Uh, uh, in 1977, 78, if you can get a chance to go to college, whatever major you have, that will be very excited to you. True. So philosophy, four years. After uh, my uh, graduation from uh, Zhongshan University, I was again assigned a job in Beijing in the hospital. Oh. In the hospital to do like an administration job. 
since they they believe as uh, your philosophy major, you may be Chinese major, you may be like a history major, you can do anything like I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. I I work in uh, in Beijing in uh, in the hospital for two years and just leading the nurses to do some uh, uh, work. Uh, after the, after their their their, their uh, work in the in the in the, uh, the nursing and duties, and uh, one reason I was uh, to go to the Beijing is because I think I can get a chance to get close to the uh, like Central Academy of Fine Arts and the uh, the Academy of Social Sciences, mm -hmm. uh, because I was thinking about uh, go, go to the graduate school. And then uh, after two years, I, I applied for the uh, the uh, art history uh, master's degree program in the in the Central Academy of Fine Arts uh, in Beijing. And the reason I choose that is because they are like a two a kind of the uh, the majors you may choose between the philosophy and the fine arts. Uh, the one may be close to the philosophy. That may be like uh, art philosophy or aesthetics. Mm. That could be the one major, but another major close to art, that's like art history or art theory. So I say that maybe I, I prefer to do more like art rather than more like a, a abstract kind of a way of thinking. So I choose uh, the art history. So the another three years, started in the Central Academy of Fine Arts, and I graduated, I stayed in the, the college, and I taught uh, all the theory over there uh, for uh, five years. So wow. I went to Central Academy in 83, I graduated in 86, uh, I came to the United States in 1991, mm. and uh, come to the Ohio State University. I got my uh, second uh, master's degree in art history. After that, I, I, I received my PhD degree uh, at the same uh, university and the same uh, uh, department, art history department in Ohio State University. That was uh, 2005. I got wow. my degree eventually. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You obviously <laughs> is very well educated, and uh, <laughs> I just uh, listen to your bio. Is uh, I I can identify so, uh, so many elements in your life, and mm -hmm. obviously you are older than me. But uh, I was born and grew up in Beijing, right. and in nineteen eighties I was in high school. But you were already in graduate school, right? And, but uh, we all felt it we felt it the 1980s was different yeah and uh, it was like uh it was a, like enlightenment uh, or right. renaissance yeah. and mm -hmm. it cannot be understatement uh, overstated how important yeah important the 1980s was to chinese culture right. and you uh, i read one of your article before you you talk mm -hmm. about your your involvement in the avant-garde movement in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Could you, okay. you know, uh, share with our audience a little bit more about how when you, because you were right in the middle of it, right? You, right. 83 to 86, yeah. uh, you were a graduate student in art history at the Central Academy of Fire Arts. At the same time, China mm -hmm. was experiencing the great renaissance on the arts and the culture. Yeah. So I, I, as a uh, high school kid, I couldn't, then be part of it, but you were ready in the middle of it. Could you please tell us what it was feel like to be ready in the middle of the avant-garde movement? Yeah, I, I, uh, that's a pretty kind of a, a, a kind of a coincidence. Uh, 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 in the graduate schools, uh, I, I uh, translate uh, some uh, the Western art theory into Chinese. Uh, when I do research for my uh, uh, the master's thesis, and the two books were translated into Chinese and were published as basically like uh, the visual uh, psychology or art psychology uh, books. Uh, that was about like uh, 85, 86, I graduated 86. And in '86, I stayed. I, after graduation, uh, I stayed in the academy, 
And uh, that year was very, very good year for, for the Chinese avant-garde movement. And uh, there were uh, a conference in, uh, in uh, the Zhuhai, uh, Guangdong province. And uh, one uh, of my colleagues asked me, do you want to go? I said, what's the conference? He said something like uh, a very, very exciting avant-garde uh, kind of a, co- a conference. I said, wait, why not? So I was so interested and I went to the Too High conference. And uh, that was 1986 and August. Uh, so after that, I just got involved in that whole uh, the movement because in the conference, there are all uh, the avant-garde uh, uh, groups, representative of uh, groups, and came to the, the, the conference. So we made we made a lot of new friends, and of course, we uh, we uh, we just really tried to do something like uh, create like a new culture, a new art, which are modern rather than uh, traditional. So that's that's how I, I got involved in this movement. Yeah, how exciting. You know, I, I, I could only imagine. And all this the 1980s Chinese fine arts has become a legend in art history already. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the, the excitement, the hope, and the inspiration and you and your colleagues had in the 1980s. And yeah. it's now in the in the books and in the museums. <laughs> and and right. then you came to the United States in 1991. Right. That's the year I went to college. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, I have two I have two questions about your 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 career path. So, you went to a vocational school of arts and crafts before you mm-hmm. went to college. Right. So you obviously laid uh, had a very strong foundation in in art, mm-hmm. and your back, strong, strong background and skill set you had in mm-hmm. art, and then later even you studied philosophy in college, and even you worked an administrative job for the government uh, for the hospital, mm-hmm. and then right. but you you ultimately you you chose what you like the art history. Right. Yeah. So, were your family background uh, what uh, influenced you to be uh, art majored, or you, this is purely personal compassion to devote your entire life into art, basically? Uh, well, I I don't have any kind of a background of art, and my parents and my father work in a newspaper in Hulan mm-hmm. called Hulan Daily, Hulan Rebound, mm-hmm. Chinese. And he was a worker, and he later on he did like a proofreading, and do a little bit of editing, and uh, so in that in that community, I I, I have some kind of friend uh, who did uh, who did like editors, maybe like uh, reporters, so everybody work on on text instead of the images. Mm-hmm. So I, I I was influenced by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why I when I went to the college, I chose the three humanities instead of the fine arts. I, I, I said, hey, I'm, I'm, even though I learned something from art and craft, but I say I believe I was better in text mm-hmm. rather than in images. Mm-hmm. So I may not be a good artist, but I could be a, a good writer. So that's one of the reasons I choose the humanities rather than the fine arts. Yeah. Very good answer. And uh, Hunan <laughs> province is one of the most cultured, I would say, artistic parts mm. of China. It's a very yeah. long tradition of right. uh, intellectualism and literati. And uh, yeah. even you are not uh, born to an artist family, but uh, your parents and your family circle obviously had some influence in the literary side of your mm-hmm. your scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then my second question about in 1991, you came to the United States. Uh, yeah. Is there a particular reason you want to come to the United States to ch- study art history? Was that a long time uh, a j- a dream or that mm-hmm. was quite spontaneous you decided to come to? the U.S. to study? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, there are two reasons. Uh, number mm. one, 
1990 and 1991 was very, very severe uh, environment back in China. Yes. Uh, when you try still do something like avant garde, and uh, the exhibitions are prohibited, and the articles uh, cannot be published. And uh, so I thought maybe I need uh, to, to, to do something else. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the reasons because of a domestic situation there. The second reason is that since I was working on the contemporary art, the modernism, postmodernism, and I said I want to go to the, the West to to get some kind of a first hand of a knowledge of what the modernism and the postmodernism or even the, the, the contemporary art are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the, another reason I come to the States and uh, looking for my uh, another degree always here. And uh, uh, in the beginning, I was thought I was about to, to go back to China after my uh, uh, PhD degree uh, uh, recipient. And uh, in, 2005, I got my degree. 2006, I went back to China. I tried to find a job in the Central Academy of Fine Arts. I tried to find a job in the China Academy of Art in Hong Kong. And the both, uh, the Academy is just, just reject and say, mm-hmm. well, uh, you are pretty, pretty welcome, but your age is not the, what we are looking for. So I said, all right, so <laughs> I cannot get a job. I don't want to go to other schools. I just want to go like that. Two of them are very, very, very kind of priests, uh, uh, a good schools in China. And so I actually come back. So they're lost. They're, they're, they're they didn't know what they missed. You are, <laughs> you are one of the best art historians in China and United States can produce. And they told yeah, them, thank you. Oh, you just settled in Ohio, which is uh, very good. I, 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 I believe you, you enjoy your life in the Midwest. Yeah, definitely. I yes. Do. Yeah, when was your last time in China, and what was your impression? Uh, one more time, please. What was your last time in China? Uh, well, okay, uh, as a, uh, one year before the pandemic, that's 2019. Oh. Oh, yeah, so every year been... before mm-hmm. the pandemic, I went back to China in summer, and with the friends, and with artists, and with the art studios, and that did and did the, the lectures in other academies and other universities and colleges. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I remember running to you at 798 uh, Art Zone in Beijing and we, uh, we had coffee. And that, yeah. that was 2018, I believe, 2018 or right. 2017. At that time, we had no idea what was coming. And right. then suddenly the world shut down. Yeah. And well, we, 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 we are. Uh, running out of uh, our inter time, but I have so many questions I want to ask you. But let's mm. let's uh, switch to some lighter questions. So, question okay. first question is: Who is your favorite artist of all time? I don't want to ask you who is your favorite contemporary artist because <laughs> you are a friend of so many of them. But I don't want to ask you who is your favorite artist of all time. Well, uh, uh, to me, there may not be only one. They are like oh, yeah, a couple yeah. of them. But uh, if, you, if you still say, hey, what's the best? Uh, who is the best? I think I, I may just call uh, Bada Shanren. Oh, yeah, Zhu Chinese da. name yeah. Zhu Da in the mm. early Qin Dynasty. And the, the reason I, I love him the best is because he was... Not only he was a representative of a literary painting in China, but he was a pretty modern in a sense. Yes. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, pieces he made. Uh, you can see uh, some kind of a formalist uh, uh, elements which mm-hmm. we uh, could not find in the 17th, 18th, even 19th century in the West. But he did that in very early time in the 17th century, early uh, 18th century back in China. 
So a lot of like modern kind of elements we, we can see from his compositions that was so fabulous, that was mm-hmm. so unique. And every time we look at the Bada Shenren, we just every time we got something new. So that's, oh, yeah. that's one of the uh, artists uh, and of the best. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I totally yeah. agree. Bada mm-hmm. Shenren is, uh, is not only an a artist, but a philosopher, I would say. And most mm-hmm. importantly, a very uh, characteristic independent right. thinker. It's, yeah. It's, uh, it's admirable. But how yeah. about uh, how about a non Chinese artist? Any uh, any particular artist you want to name? And uh, non- is a Chinese artist of non Chinese artist? Non Chinese artist. European uh, American. The West, yeah, the Western one. Uh, there are so uh, there are so many of them that are uh, so critical in the development of the, the contemporary art. On um, well. Boys, I think I love boys. Mm, and Joseph Boys, okay. And Joseph Boys, and uh, he uh, was a very, really, really conceptual kind to me. And he even uh, promoted some kind of a, the, uh, the social movement uh, in, in art. It's really uh, something similar to, to Chinese contemporary artists. They really try to do something sociological rather than yeah, very, very, very true. And for yeah. Joseph Boyce and uh, yeah. some Chinese contemporary artists, and art and the politics are completely inseparable. Well, right. I, I do have a, a one last question I want to ask you. Okay. That, uh, uh, what, is there any particular book uh, you enjoy at the moment or movie uh, or even art show you want to recommend to our audience? Okay. Yeah. Yesterday I saw this question. I, I was thinking about it, and one of the uh, the, the best books I, I will recommend it to the audiences could be like Dao De Jin, oh. and, and maybe translated into English like the uh, the classics of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I I love this book the the most is because he uh, the Lao Tzu, the other was really. Uh, uh, important and very critical to the whole Chinese history of a culture, rather than only the philosophy, maybe just only the uh, ideologies. Uh, he, he spoke that the Jin influenced the generations and generations, especially the little depending, uh, because I my next project was writing about like. Uh, Something uh, ink art in China in the mm. contemporary uh, time. Uh, the temporary title would be like a Tao of Ink. Mm. Tao of Ink or the Way of Ink is definitely just referred to something to the Tao De Jin, the idea from uh, by, by Lao Tzu. But uh, of course, it's very, very contemporary kind of interpretation by the Chinese artists. So this book be, will, became a, the very fundamental to my next book. Uh, on not only the, for the academic reason, of course, for, for people's uh, life experience. Mm. The many, many Chinese intellectuals, literatists, and the uh, ancient times, they're so influenced by the Taoism and the Lao Tzu and the Zhuang Tzu. Of course, uh, uh, beside the Tao Te Ching, people may also read the Zhuang Tzu as well. So these two fundamental kind of uh, like a Bible of a Chinese philosophy, I think, is so to, to, to one of my uh, best favorites. Thank you so much for the recommendation. This is uh, this is fantastic recommendation. I have a one fantastic summary of Dao De Jing and Taoism and its influence on uh, Chinese civilization and Chinese arts and the culture. Right. Well, yeah. thank you, thank you so much, Professor Zhou. Yeah, you're we welcome. Our guest on the Nation of Immigrants, and uh, let's uh, schedule another time to have you back on the show. We can talk more about uh, uh, con- Chinese contemporary art, and okay. I look forward to continue to read, continue reading your book. And congratulations for the fantastic publication. And I hope you can travel back to China and to meet your artists and uh, uh, friends and colleagues and give lectures and in the very near future. Thank you, Professor Joe. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, Wang Chang. Thank you, the uh, 
uh, the audio and uh, the uh, the stations and invite me help me. So and uh, very enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you. Aloha. See you next time. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.